The Life of Sakata Gintoki from Gintama. Gintoki Sakata is the main protagonist of the Gintama series. He is the founder and president of the Yorozuya, as well as a highly skilled samurai, having fought in the Jōui War in the past. During the war, he became known as the Shiroyasha, literally meaning White Yashka, a kind of demon in Buddhism and Hinduism, due to his powerful swordsmanship, demonic appearance, white clothing, and silver hair. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Sakata Gintoki. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, double check if you're still subscribed to us. We've noticed that for whatever reason, YouTube is unsubscribing some users from channels without letting them know. So if you want to catch all of our videos, check it out. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Childhood It is unknown where he was born, what happened to his parents, and what he was doing before becoming a child scavenger. It's also unknown how long he was doing this. He gained the nickname Corpse Eating Demon from the nearby villagers due to being commonly seen wandering in deserted battlefields searching corpses for food and weapons to survive. During one search, Gintoki encounters Yoshida Shuyu, who had heard the rumors about the child and came to investigate. Taking a liking to Gin and seeing himself in the child, Shuyu gave Gin his sword and asked him to follow him. Gin became Shoyu's first student of his newly opened school, Shoka Sanjuku, where he learned basic swordsmanship and academics. After gathering more students, all mostly poor, the school earns the attention and scrutiny of the wealthier people in the village. They also gained the attention of two military academic students who became disillusioned with the academy and the people attending it, Katsuro Kotaru and Takasugi Shinsuke. The two were attracted by the school's goal for the children, striving to achieve their own ideal of a samurai while struggling against themselves. The two will later officially join after helping fend off some officials from trying to arrest Shuyu. Gin later earns himself a rival in Takasugi. Years later, during the Kansei Purge, despite Gin's best efforts to stop them, the Tenshui Naraku arrested Shuyu and burned down the school. Before leaving, Shuyu asked Gin to protect his fellow students, as a promise, to which Gin mentally agreed. After learning what happened, the students decided to join the ongoing Joy War, allied with the Joy, to rescue their imprisoned teacher. They met Sakamoto Tatsuma during their fight, and Gin gains the nickname Shiryasha, White Yashka, due to his mostly white attire, silver hair, and of course, his ferocious fighting style. At one point, Takasugi asked Gin to protect Shuyu in his stead, though Gin never truly agreed and instead asked Takasugi for a promise to stay alive. During a battle, after Sakamoto was taken off the front lines due to injury, everyone except Gin, Katsura, and Takasugi were killed, and the trio was captured. Gin was forced to choose between killing Shoyu to save Katsura and Takasugi and vice versa. He decided to keep his promise to Shoyu and protect his friends, but in turn broke his promise to Takasugi. Shoyu gives Gin a final thank you before he's beheaded by him. After their enemies left, the trio buried their teacher's head and their comrade's corpses and went their separate ways, leaving the war. Sometime later, a wandering Gin overheard a man trying to offer his daughter to be executed in his place to a group of officials. The man was a Joy informant who had given up information on certain Joy and their families to these officials that belonged to a political faction within the government. Gin offered himself in the daughter's place to protect her. Both he and the informant were arrested. In jail, he unknowingly met the girl that he saved, who was adopted by the executioner, the 16th Ikeda Yemon. He saw Gin's deeds, and after executing Asaimon's father, decided that he had no right to execute the person who was a good man, then presumed to release him. Injured and starving, he wandered in the cold winter night to a graveyard to die, until he encountered Otose leaving food offerings at her husband's grave that he was leaning on. He asked her if he could have the manju offering she'd set down, and she told him to ask her husband, who was receiving the offerings instead of her. Gin then ate her husband's manju without asking him, saying that dead people don't speak. In return, he made a promise to her husband that he'd protect Otose until she dies. After this encounter, Gin became a tenant on the second floor of Snack Otose, and founded the old Yorozuya with Kanamaru, Ikasawa, and Furuhashi. Together, their business flourished and they became friends. Nevertheless, for many reasons, Gin threw his partners into a river and ended up working in the Yorozuya alone until the start of the series. Harusame Arc the Yorozuya was asked by a client to find his missing daughter Kimiko. During the search, they eventually found their way into a shady nightclub filled with a manto. In the bathroom of the club, Gin bumped into Doraku and Kimiko. While the Harusame was trying to get rid of her because of her addiction to a drug called Tensekyo, translated to paradise. He tried to protect Kimiko from them, but due to the shock of seeing Kagura and Shinpachi being taken away from them, Gin was caught off guard and impaled in the shoulder by Doraku. 
The impact caused both him and Kimiko to break and fall out of the window behind them and both were knocked unconscious. In his unconscious state, Gin has a dream of carrying a dying body through a field of corpses, which is presumed to be during the Joy War, when he hears a voice from one of the dead bodies telling him to drop who he was carrying, saying that he could not save him and that he ultimately does not have what it takes to rescue anyone, nor protect anyone when it really matters. The corpse calls him reckless and uncaring, only swinging his sword at what's in front of him, not protecting anyone. He's also called powerless in an attempt to coax him into dropping everything, namely those who are closest to him, and taking the easy road, which he wordlessly declines, and is shocked to find the body he's carrying is also a dead corpse. He then reawakens. The dream is likely influenced by his subconscious telling him that he is not good enough and was triggered by his inability to save Kimiko, Shimpachi, and Kagura. After awakening, it's revealed that Gin and Kimiko were both saved by Katsura, who informs him of the drug afflicting her and also tells him about the Harasame, and tries to warn him not to go after them in his bad condition. Instead of heeding the warning, he insists on saving Shinpachi and Kagura, and convinced by his desire to protect the two and as well as the fact that he owed Gin, Katsura later agreed to go with him. Disguised as space captains, they attacked the Harasame's ship. As Katsura bombed their storage to destroy the drug, Gin found and knocked out Doraku and carried Shinpachi and Kagura home. Gengai Arc To help the neighbors stop a noisy inventor, Higura Gengai, the Yorozuya, let Shinpachi sing in front of his house. After a while, one of the inventor's robots, Saburo, came out and the group came to meet Gengai. They managed to get into his garage and moved Gengai's inventions to a place that they couldn't disturb the neighbors, namely the riverbank, but broke them into pieces in the process. Since Gengai needed to prepare the robots for the festival that night, the Yorozuya was forced to help him fix them. During the festival, Gin talked to Gengai about the Joy War, and Gengai asked if Gin ever thought of avenging his fallen comrades. Later on in the festival, it's revealed that Gengai was working for Takasugi, Gin's former companion during the Joy War alongside Katsura. Takasugi threatens Gin with his sword on his back to stand and watch the show. Under threat of a sword at his back, Gin was forced to watch Gengai's robots run wild, attacking the Shogun and the Shinsengumi. Nevertheless, after a moment, he grabbed Takasugi's sword with his bare hands, completely immobilizing it before punching the other. Gin then confronted Gengai and his robot Saburo, asking him to stop what he was doing. Gengai ordered Saburo to fire towards the Shogun even if Gin stood in his way. Gin proceeded to attack the robot and destroyed it, noticing for a brief moment that the robot hesitated and lowered its weapon on its own free will. Rengoku Kan Arc Okita Sogo offered the Yorozuya a job which involved them tracking down the champion of Rengoku Kan, Kitamaru. During the investigation, they later found out that Kitamaru had been raising dozens of orphans, and they decided to help him escape from the Tendoshu with his children. However, Kitamaru was killed by the new Rengoku Kan champion, Onijishi. Later on, the children asked the Orozuya to avenge their sensei, giving their toys as payment. Gin agreed to help them, despite Hijikata's warning. Later, Gin entered the ring with Kitamaru's mask, as he challenged Onijishi to a revenge match. As they started, Gin's mask broke and he received a heavy blow from Onijishi. Gin, however, blocked the attack with his wooden sword to reduce the impact. He then dealt a finishing blow to Onijishi. The Shinsengumi then showed up to arrest the Rengokugan owners, despite knowing the consequences they may receive for their interference. Memory Loss Arc In a scooter accident, Gin lost his memory. Kagura and Shimpachi tried to trigger the restoration of his memories by visiting many of Gin's friends and comrades. They almost succeeded on multiple occasions, but outside interference always ruined their efforts and wiped Gin's memory clean. During their visit to Ote, she suggests to Gin that he'd be better off forgetting his old self and starting a new life. Meanwhile, Sakamoto Tatsuma crashes his spaceship into the Yorozuya's house, thus wiping out the last remnants of Gin's previous existence. With no home, memories, or friends, Gin declares his old mess of a life to be null and void and decides to disband the Yorozuya and start his life all over. He's later found, along with Commander Kondo Isao, who had also lost his memory because of Ote's cooking, to be working in a just away factory by Yamazaki Sagaru, which he had infiltrated because of the factory manager's shady background. Soon, they found out that the just aways that they were producing were actually powerful bombs that would be sold to the Joishishi. It's also revealed that the factory manager, Banzo, had decided to destroy Ido after losing his job and his otaku son turned into a Yakuza member. To do so, he planned on using the giant cannon set inside the factory. Kagura and Shinpachi find their way to the factory thanks to Otose's investigation, and they help the Shinsengumi try and defeat Banzo. When Banzo begins to fire the cannon, they stand in front of Gin to protect him, and he starts to remember everything slowly. Having fully regained his memory, Gin grabs his wooden sword from Shinpachi and destroys the cannon. After its explosion, he walks away, telling Shinpachi and Kagura that they are going home. Umibozu Arc 
Kagura's father is prepared to drag Kagura home, and after witnessing the collateral damage their fight creates, Gin tells Kagura that children should return home to family. He encourages her to leave, but when he sees her on the news fighting for her life, he doesn't hesitate to go help. Once things calm down, Gin hands over a letter Kagura secretly wrote to her father, one of many who remain unsent due to the lack of address. Go Ninja Arc Katsura asks for Gin and the others to help in rescuing Elizabeth from the clutches of an evil magistrate. Enlisting the help of Sachan, the four receive some hasty ninja training and form the Go Ninja in order to storm the magistrate's home. Gin himself was the White Ninja. After clashing with some grunts and fighting their way through the various traps, they make it to the final room where Elizabeth was supposedly being held. Instead, they were confronted by Hattori Zenzo and his Shinobi 5. Gin faces off against Zenzo, who still holds a grudge over the jump affair. Though the group was seemingly outclassed by the professional ninja, they managed to defeat them using a combination of fighting, luck, and bad curry. In the end, it turned out that Elizabeth had never been captured and had instead just left after an argument with Zura. Inugami Arc Gin stumbles in, hung over from a night of drinking, to find Sadaharu extremely large and with Shinpachi and Kagura's legs hanging out of his massive maw. At first, he thinks he's still drunk, but after the other two confirm his abnormal largeness, he pushes the blame onto Kagura for giving him too much calcium, from his own precious strawberry milk nonetheless. He then produces a bark translator, a corny Doraemon reference, and finds that the incredibly rude Sadaharu is in pain from growing back into his Jushin form. He breaks the ceiling, causing a ruckus in Kabuchicho. However, Gin refuses to abandon Sadaharu, claiming he would have never taken him in if he was going to abandon him. Gin and Shinpachi are later mobbed by reporters, but are rescued by shrine maidens Ane and Mone. When the group reaches where Sadaharu had run off to, the Miko girls tell Gin and Shinpachi to distract Sadaharu while they recite the incantation to seal him. While Sadaharu attempts to attack Shinpachi in his crazed state, Gin jumps in front of him and takes the brunt of his attack with his sword. He moves to attack, but cannot because he doesn't want to hurt the pet. Sadaharu hits him with his paw, heavily injuring him. However, the group manages to seal the Unogami with the power of a baseball thrown in a five-pointed star, and Sadaharu is returned to normal. The Miko girls offer to take Sadaharu back if they don't want him anymore, but Gin declines, and before we can hear his reason, it cuts away. Infant Strife Arc when a baby that looks similar to Gin turns up on the Yorozuya's doorstep, Gin must now clear the misunderstanding that the child is his. It later turns out that there was more than meets the eye, with the child being the grandson of a wealthy old man. While trying to return the baby, Kanchichiro, to his mother, he engages in a duel with Okada Nizu, who was hired to help Kahei, Kanchichiro's grandfather. Mother Arc A customer comes from a wayward town and requests the Yorozuya help find her son. They find out that the son has undergone plastic surgery to change his features. They suspect that the man is now working in a male host bar and join after discovering is being harassed by the Yakuza. After the Yakuza come to collect payment and fail, the mother who came to look for her son was swept away when the Yakuza was leaving to be seen later at the Yakuza's base, helping a pet of theirs give birth. They capture and threaten the son to pay back the money. He goes with all of his earnings to gain back his mother, but the Yorozuya enter causing havoc, saving the mother and impeding the son from losing his money. The mother leaves without her son, but she's proud of him nonetheless. Benizakura Arc Elizabeth comes to the Yorozuya alone, but they're unable to help him due to the fact that he wasn't talking. They wonder where Katsura is, but Gin ignores the thought and leaves for a job, leaving Shinpachi and Kagura to handle Elizabeth. He meets his clients, Murara Tetsuya and Murara Tetsuko, and is asked to find the evil sword Benizakura, which has gone missing. Later that night, he saves Shinpachi and Elizabeth from the assassin and new member of the Kihetai, Okada Nizu, who is revealed to have been the wielder of the Benizakura. Nizu sends Gin into a fury by claiming he killed Katsura and had cut off his trademark long hair as evidence and a trophy. Gin refuses to believe him and engages in battle. During the fight, Nizo overpowers him and he badly injures Gin, who was unaware of Benizakura's properties and abilities and impales him, but he's saved by Shinpachi who cuts off Nizo's arm. He retreats after people come due to the commotion created by the fight, leaving Gin half dead and bleeding out. He wakes up bandaged and in the care of Shimura Tai. He wants to go help Kagura and Shinpachi, both of whom were fighting the Kihetai without him, much to the displeasure of Ote, who threatens to kill him if he moves, claiming he's in no shape to be fighting. While he's under house arrest, Tetsuko comes in to make him an offer in order to stop the sword. He declines her offer, but while Ote is out buying jump, he attempts to leave to fight anyway. Ote, however, knew he would leave and set him up with a fresh change of clothes at the doorstep and her favorite umbrella, which he promises to come back alive to return. With the help of Tetsuko and a sword crafted by her to replace his broken Bokuto, Gin manages to land on the Kihetai airship. There, he encounters Nizu once more and they fight again. During the fight, Gin starts out strong and evenly matched with the demon sword, but as the sword 
sword drained Nizo's strength and became stronger, later is overwhelmed by the full power of the Benizakura and his previous injuries, even after reawakening the mentality of the Shirayasha and falls behind. He's knocked unconscious and wrapped in a binding tight coil by the Benizakura controlled Nizu, but awakens as Nizu goes to attack Tetsuko. He slices the sword in half, effectively ending its reign of terror. During the aftermath, he's herded out by Shinpachi, Kagura, and Tetsuko, only to find that the Harusame space pirates have invaded the ship, called by Takasugi, who offered both Gin and Katsura's head as a prize for their backing. Gin and Katsura battle the Amanto while the rest of the gang flees, and during their fight, tell each other to never change for the worse, and if they ever did, to kill them. They then point to Takasugi, who has already broken his promise, and that the next time they meet, they will cut him down. With that, and the others retreating, they jump ship and parachute down to the ocean below. When Katsura tells him that Shoyo's lesson book saved his life and that Takasugi still has his copy, Gin tells him that he threw away his own book because he spilled ramen on it. Fuyo Arc while throwing out garbage, Gin discovers a talking severed head that is revealed to be part of a robotic maid. It's part of some project and there are others seeking to obtain it. Yagyu Arc Gin helps Shinpachi on his journey to get back Ote from Kyubei from the Yagyu family, who claimed Ote to be her bride. They all enter a competition where they attach plates to themselves and in teams have to take out the other team's plates to win. Kondo ends up in a restroom and cries for help after he finds out his toilet papers run out. At the same time, he realizes that Gin is in the same restroom sharing the no toilet paper problem. Afterward, they realize that Yagyu Bimbokusai was in the stall between them, also without paper. Sometime later, Tojo Ayumu arrives, and he planned to take Gin and Kondo down while they were defenseless and on the toilet. Unfortunately, he gets a stomach ache from having eaten bad eggs and joins them in the last remaining stall. Now all four of them look for alternatives to toilet paper while crying for help. Bimbokusai found double-sided sandpaper and gave a piece to everyone. Gin is left with Bimbokusai as Gin uses a money bill to use and Bimbokusai uses a certain important scroll. After that, they both leave the bathroom and start their fight. Gin gets easily pulled around by Bimbokusai with his attacks as Gin hardly manages to him because of his small size. Later on, Gin meets up with Shinpachi as they both team up against Yagyu Kyubei and Bimbokusai to break their plates. After a bit of roughing around, Gin manages to maneuver around Kyubei's attacks and break her plate in midair. At that point though, Binbokusai grabs onto Gin and hits him into a statue, which results in breaking his plate. At the same time, Shinpachi comes through with a surprise attack against Binbokusai, breaking his plate and ultimately winning the game for Gin's team. Later on, Gin and his friends get hired by Kondo to break down the wedding ceremony in which he was going to forcefully go with Princess Bubbles. At the ceremony though, Gin and his friends do not take the job seriously and complain that there are only bananas as wedding food. However, thanks to Shimuro Tai, the ceremony gets interrupted and the marriage somehow did not happen. Hard-Boiled Detective Arc Follow a hard-boiled detective in his latest case. Okita Mitsuba Arc Gin was bribed by Okita Sogo to pretend to be his best friend for the day. Even though it was supposed to be a setup to assure Sogo's sister Mitsuba, Gin admitted the friendship to Mitsuba at the end of the day. When Mitsuba's health conditions worsened, Gin visited her at the hospital with her favorite spicy snacks. Before Sogo headed off to the battlefield, Gin, while pretending to be sleeping, listened to Sogo's most inner thoughts. He then headed off to the battlefield together with Sogo. Hasegawa Prosecution Arc When Hasegawa was charged with sexual harassment, Gin turned up at the last minute as his lawyer. Hasegawa remarked that Gin stood a chance since no one had ever won an argument against him. Oi Arc Tasked with buying the Oe's by their clients, Gin and the Yorozuya queued up for the purchase of an Oe. The situation later turned into a battle of the Yorozuya against the Shinsengumi. Gin, together with Kagura, took part in the final round of the battle, Dragon Hunter 3, where each team will have to defeat the bandits in the caves. Abandoned by their teammates at the start, Gin and Hijikata teamed up to make their way to the caves where they were eventually able to restore their health back to full. Using the village leader as their weapons, Gin and Hijikata started their fight with the bandits. However, it became a hassle when Okita arrives from the casino and Kagura at a much higher level and chaos ensues. Shinsengumi Crisis Arc Gin and the Yorozuya were asked by Hijikata to protect the Shinsengumi from Isao as he was unable to do so when the demonic sword's power started eating into his personality and turning him into Toshi. Gin and his friends decide to help him as they steal a Shinsengumi police car. Later on, while dressed in Shinsengumi uniforms, the Yorozuya headed off to the train and into the battlefield to save Kondo that was the biggest target of the internal strife. There, Gin encounters Kawakami Banzai, as he reveals Kiheitai's plans to Gin about destroying the Shinsengumi. While the train that Kondo, Hijikata, and the others were on explodes at a bridge and hangs over the edge, Gin starts to fight with Banzai. At one point, Banzai stops Gin's movements with his instrument strings, but Gin manages to break out of them in a painful way. 
When Isao protected Kondo and Hijikata from these shots from a Kihetai helicopter, Gin pushed Banzai into the helicopter, which caused it to lose balance. On the helicopter, Banzai takes out his hidden sword and pierces Gin's left shoulder as he argues to Gin that their country is rotten and Gin has lost his way of life. At that point, Gin had managed to use Banzai's own strings to tie Banzai and the helicopter together as he jumps down to the ground. Gin tells Banzai to leave Takasugi a message and says that what he tried to protect in the Joy Wars has not changed. Gin then pulls his wooden sword, which is attached with strings to the helicopter as he pulls the helicopter down with all his strength and destroys it. Banzai manages to survive somehow as he returns to Takasugi for a summary of the mission. Guardian Dog Arc a Yakuza group asks the Yorozuya to get the boss's son out of the warehouse where he's been hiding for years. Nakamura Kyojuro claimed to have killed Utsuzo in order to make way for his own ascension to power within the group, when in fact he had actually killed himself by hanging some years before the Gintama storyline took place. Presumably, he did this to protect his father from heartbreak and guilt, since it was the father's drastic actions to force the son into becoming heir of the group that led to the son holding himself up inside the storehouse, where he eventually hung himself. Rival gangs believed the rumor and plotted to oust him for his seeming treachery and more likely to take over the group's leadership. Under the guise of a ceremony to officially recognize Kyojiro as the Mashiroi group leader, the rival gang laid an ambush to get rid of him. While escaping the gangs together with Gin, Kyojiro was mortally wounded by a gunshot and died with a peaceful look on his face, next to Kaguzo's tomb, his father in the drizzling rain. Ryugujo Arc The Orozuya went to the beach with the mission to catch a suspicious person. However, Gin started to look at chicks with his binoculars. Kagura caught Kaminashi videotaping girls in their swimsuits and proceeded to beat him up. They agreed not to take Kaminashi to the police as he would take them to Ryugu Palace. In the sea, they saw a cruiser with Kyube, Ote, and a golden turtle on board. They had saved his daughter from some punks, so he was taking them to Ryugu Palace. Later, they saw a warship and Hasegawa was on board with a badass turtle. The turtle had saved Hasegawa when he was about to jump off a cliff and was taking him to Ryugu Palace. Suddenly, Katsura appeared, flying a soft-shelled turtle and was going to Tianzu. The two turtles started to fight and everyone got lost in the sea as their boats got destroyed. As he was alone on the island, he practiced Kamehameha's to his heart's content and when he saw them, he got embarrassed. They pretended like they saw nothing. They then saw Ote singing Tayo no Komachi Angel and she got embarrassed when she saw them. They found Kyubei on their way. She drew an ice cream, but the waves erased half of it and made it look like poop, and she used her body as a wall to protect it from the waves. After she saw them, she got embarrassed, and Ote tried to make her feel better. They found Kagura, stating that Laputa must definitely be on that huge cloud. She also felt very bad when she saw them. At last, they saw Katsura. He was drawing an SOS with his P and was singing Tayo no Komachi Angel. He saw a giant cloud and stated that the Takizawa crystal must be there and ran out of P. He also protected the SOS from the waves with his body, making Gin furious and he stated that he doesn't understand any of his actions. They talked about their situation and made three groups. Katsura, Kagura, and Gin were in charge of exploring the island. They found a giant box in the forest. While Gin was about to touch it, Katsura stopped him but he accidentally touched the box. Gin managed to save Kagura by pushing her, but a gas came out of it and turned him and Katsura into old men. They found the others fighting with the turtles and easily got caught due to their old weak bodies. In the prison, he watched sumo matches with Katsura. Kagura thought Gin was eating something and attacked him. Katsura got disturbed by the noise and stated that kids must stop playing with the Mega Drive and go outside. Gin started to repeat the phrase that he heard from Shinpachi. Some turtles appeared and took Ote. Then Kaminashi came and pushed the guard to the bars to make him take the keys, but Kagura kicked the bars down. The turtles attacked, but Kyubei and Kagura defeated them. Kaminashi told everyone that Otohime is doing this to make everyone look ugly, so she can be the most beautiful creature. Before they went to take Ote back, Kaminashi used Spouser to divide their power easily, but the Spouser got destroyed as Gin and Katsura were too much of a burden. The soldiers found them and started to attack. Shinpachi carried Gin and Katsura and tried to escape from the soldiers. After getting away from the soldiers, Shinpachi, Katsura, and Gin entered into a room and found a man in a capsule. Katsura sits on the controller and the computer open, showing Otohime's journal, mostly about Urashima. After reading the journal, Gin asked Zura if he can run straight, and went to rehabilitate a 3,000-year-old woman. Urashima communicated with Shinpachi through the computer and told him about the antidote. Gin and Katsura went to stop the cannon, and the old turtles confronted them. However, as they are all old, Gin stated that there isn't any way that they'll lose, and started to run much faster than the others. Shinpachi caught up to them with the antidote on his shoulder, but their new challenge was stairs, and it was very hard for Katsura and Gin. However, Hasegawa, Kabenashi, Kyubei, and Kagura tried to stop Otohime, and earned them some time. 
Before they put the antidote to the cannon, Otohime caught the antidote and made it fall down, but the antidote leaked, resulting in Katsura and Gin returning to their former selves, and they easily shot the antidote out of the cannon. Everyone in Ido got back to their old selves. Otohime lost and got stuck under the parts of the cannon that was destroyed. Gin and the others saved her. Monkey Hunter Arc after hearing news about a certain incident about aliens doing experiments on humans, the Yorozuya realized that their body parts were changed into screwdrivers. Gin's analog stick was turned into a screwdriver, and went into a rage, telling that he'll definitely kill the aliens who committed a grave sin upon him. The trio found out that they're not the only ones with a modified body, so they decided to play Monkey Hunter in order to return their bodies to normal. Gin's name was changed to Ginko, with the appearance of a cute, short-haired girl carrying a large sword. Correspondence Arc Shinpachi found a message in a bottle at the shore, asking him to be his pen pal. After seeing the picture, he decided to properly work on the message, but doesn't know where to start. Then comes Gin to the rescue. Kintaro Arc Sadaharu was feeling bad, so they took him to a veterinarian. There was a human hand-shaped shadow in his stomach, and when he saw it, Gin got terrified. He told the doctor that they don't need his help, and that they'll make Sadaharu puke themselves, but Sadaharu puked in the room. It was just a human-sized doll. Gin and Shinpachi took the doll and went home. Then, a client called them to the hospital and wanted them to find their father. While they were on the way, Katsura appeared on foot and told Gin everything about Kintaro. Katsura also wanted to ride his bike, but they stopped, gave Katsura the doll, and left. While the cats were targeting Kintaro, Gin accidentally hit them with his bike and wondered if he had done something. Ghost Ryokan Arc Otose asked the Yorozuya along with Otei to visit an old friend of hers who runs a hot spring. As they reached the place, only Gin and Shinpachi realized the place is a haunted, run-down hot spring. He tries to find ways to get out of the place as soon as possible, but it only gets worse when the road was blocked by a big boulder and Ote, Kagura, and Shinpachi were possessed by ghosts, preferably calling stands, and they play Uno all day and night. Oiwa, the owner of the hot spring, chose Gin to be new staff, seeing as he has a great resistance to being possessed. Scared half to death, he acts as staff with his screen name Gin under Oiwa's orders, with the help of Rei, a ghost staff at the hot spring. Finding out Rei is also against Oiwa's way of running the hot spring, she helps Gin conspire with Mitsuhide, Nobunaga, and Hideyoshi, nicknamed as the Brief Three, to lessen the trust of the ghost coming by humiliating Ayasu, the special guest of the hot spring. Unknown to him, the Brief Three is loyal to Oiwa and betrayed him instead, and his harsh actions caused him to be imprisoned and lose hope. But then he found a way to settle the score after seeing Ote, Shinpachi, and Kagura as stands watch him in despair. Rather than battling the customer stands head on, Gin sang the Thousand Winds to purify them, and with the help of his friends, they entertained them and gave them happiness that sent them on to heaven. Oiwa gained more power as she fought Gin by inhaling her own husband and became her excellency, but Gin, by absorbing Rei, Kagura, Shinpachi, Ote, and some other stands dominated the battle. Oiwa was defeated through Xavier, who possessed him as well. Oiwa's husband cannot accept the fact and absorbs all the stands, even from the living animals. As they left Gin's body, and as he tried to return on it together with Ote, Kagura, and Shinpachi, Xavier shot them and took the body inside the inn. Oiwa's husband became more violent and forcefully tried to inhale them all when Oiwa realized that her husband couldn't rest in peace because he cannot leave her behind alone. The stand was defeated after Oiwa apologized for the mistakes she had done, which caused her husband to be purified. Oiwa decided to continue running the hot spring for the stands even if she was alone. Gin left them behind with the assurance that Oiwa will be doing well and will not be lonely, probably knowing that Rei will continue helping her with the inn. Yoshiwara in Flames Arc Gin meets Saita, who was trying to steal his wallet, but instead got caught, even though Gin's wallet was empty. At Snack Otose, Saita explains his situation about his desperate need for money to be able to meet the courtesan Hinoa of the underground city Yoshiwara. Gin makes a mistake at first that Saita wants to meet her because of sexual desire, but he then reveals that Hinoa may be his lost mother. When everyone realizes this desperate need for money to meet his mother, Otose offers for him to work at her snack house to be able to help a bit. After Saito has been working at the snack bar for a while, Gin went to Yoshiwara and at a bar he overhears the men who were given money by Saito for him to be able to afford to meet Hinoa one day. The men had spent the money on sake instead. Gin knocks them down and takes their wallet to repay for their crime. However, because of this ruckus, Gin gets attacked by a Hiyaka soldier who is disguised as a bar waitress. Gin flees as he meets up with Shinpachi, Kagura, and Saita, who had Hyaka on their tail as well. Gin then meets Sukuyo as he protects Saita from her kunai by repelling them. Gin got hit by one right in his forehead and tries to desperately act nonchalant about it. By making things worse, he gets noticed that Saita got hit by one of the kunai as well, and as a result it made him even more desperate, but he still tries to desperately act unfazed. Sukuyo then knocks him down with everyone else with a kunai that made them fall unconscious. 
Later on, they all end up in underground pipes, and Tsukuyo faked her death to let them escape from Yoshiwara. She was asked by Hinoa to let Saita escape as she does not want him to get hurt by getting near her. Suddenly, the group is interfered with by the Yatos, Kamui, Abuto, and Ungyo from the Harusame Pirates who plan to capture Saita to bring him to Hosen. Gin and the others get easily tricked as the Yatos succeed in capturing Saita and then destroy the pipe walls, which result in the group losing their footing. Thanks to Sukuyo's help, Gin and the group manage to survive the fall. Gin and the others then decide to rescue Saita and then try at the same time to get the sun back over Yoshiwara. Gin and his friends disguise themselves in Yoshiwara female clothing as they manage, together with Sukuyo, to infiltrate the Hosen castle. However, once inside, they get spotted right away by the Hiyaka soldiers. Sukuyo tells Gin and his friends to move on ahead and she'll hold the soldiers off. Gin then asks Sukuyo to give him her blowing pipe as a promise that they'll all survive and will return it once the fight's over. As they proceed, the group encounters Abuto who plans to clean up the infiltrators. Shinpachi and Kagura offer to fight him while Gin will run ahead. Later on, Gin finally encounters Hosen who had to meet up with Saita who had finally reunited with his mother, even though it was revealed that she was not his real mother. Hosen asks him what his reason to be here is and wonders if he wants to have a drink with a woman at his Yoshiwara. Gin answers he doesn't want a drink from a woman who's crying as he notes Hinoa's tears and instead wants a drink from a smiling woman without sadness. Gin and Hosen then start their battle against each other as Hosen brings out his giant fighting umbrella and Gin had prepared a samurai sword. Gin got easily pushed back by Hosen's first strike and after some blows gets smashed into a wall. Hosen quickly jumps forth and grabs his head into the wall. Hosen tells Gin that the samurai have lost their place in life and that their world and women have already fallen into the Amanto's hands, including his own. He tells him the samurai have already lost their battle against the Amanto, but Gin, however, laughs at this word and says that he's still fighting for the world. Gin then pierces Sukuyo's blowing pipe in into Hosen's right eye, making him feel great pain. During that time, Gin yells at Saita to run away with his mother. He refuses as he does not want to leave behind his friends. Gin answered that he should do it for his sake as he does not want to fail protecting anyone again. Gin suddenly gets hit again by Hosen, which results in leaving him close to death. After a short while, Sukuyo shows up at the palace together with several Hyaka soldiers as they all plan to take down Hosen together. Sukuyo sarcastically makes fun of Gin when she sees his condition, but when she throws a kunai at him, Gin catches it with his fingers. Gin then returns to the battle as he joins forces with Sukuyo and the Hyakas. The battle gets pretty tight as Gin manages to get some big hits at Hosen as the Hyakas back him up by throwing more kunai. Hosen easily defeats a bunch of Hyakas though as Gin gets more injured from his attacks. At one point, with help from Tsukuyo, Gin strikes a big hit with his wooden sword against Hosen and attacks several times after without Hosen having time to strike back. Gin pulls Hosen back against the walls, and with help from the Hiyaka, they do a finishing attack using several kunai. Believing that Hosen is defeated, everyone gets happily relieved. However, Hosen then throws back some of the kunai, which goes towards Tsukuyo. Gin then pulls away Sukuyo and takes the hits from the kunai himself. A critically injured Hosen rises back from the wall and claims that no matter how many candles of light they collect, they cannot compare to the sun. Gin, however, declines and says that with enough light, they can melt the chains of Yoshiwara. At that point, the hatches to the underground start to open thanks to Saita, Shimpachi, and Kagura, who had planned to bring the sun down over the town. When Hosen realizes that, the sun starts to shine into the city. Gin then moves in and dealt the final blow that sent him straight through the wall of his mansion and out into the sunlight. As Hosen was a Yato who hadn't seen sunlight for many years, as stated by Hinoa in episode 144, his body immediately reacted to the sun, drying up and dying in Hinoa's lap, who had been carried to him by two rebelling members of the Hyaka. She had always wanted to show him the sun and cried as she said he was just a foolish old man who wanted to sleep under the sun, yet he built that foolish city and turned everyone against him. Hosen was buried at an unbearably hot place as stated by Umibozo in episode 146. He was buried on a cliff with his umbrella used as his gravestone. Gin, who was there with Umibozu, said that the prostitutes wanted Hosen to sunbathe in the afterlife. Umibozu then told Gin that he didn't expect him to take down Hosen. However, Gin quickly disapproved that he did it himself, and said that he never could have made it alone, and that they just ganged up on him. Umibozu continued that Kamui thought otherwise. Kamui had been put in charge of Yoshiwara, and he took credit for killing Hosen, telling the Harusame that it was a result of their investigation. But he hadn't sent anybody there, and had left the place completely unattended. According to Umibozu, this was because Kamui had no interest in Yoshiwara. His only interest was in Gin, as he had obtained Yoshiwara so that no one would lay a hand on them. Umibozu then stated that Gin may have saved Yoshiwara, but he himself would be killed. Yorozuya Barber's Arc Gin, Kagura, and Shinpachi were left by the owner of the barber shop to buy some manga. Without experience, the Yorozuya find ways to do their duties as Yorozuya Barbers. Otsu Arc Gin literally gets dragged into Shinpachi's fight against Hijikata for the number one Otsu fan club. Tama Quest Arc 
Tama was infected by a virus, and with the help of old Gengai, it's up to Gin along with Shinpachi and Kagura to save her. He also met the Leukocyte King, which looked the same as him, only wearing different clothes. Red Spider Arc Tsukuyo hires the Yorozuya to help her stop the most recent criminals appearing in Yoshiwara. Acting like a married thug's couple, Gin and Tsukuyo infiltrate into a group of thieves, but they later discovered that they only want to steal Kamaboko. They escape from the organization and investigated another one whose members have tattoos of spiders on their bodies. The organization discovers the two and the leader ambushed by Gin. They found out that the leader of this organization was Jiraiya, the former teacher of Tsukuyo, and she was held captive by him. Thanks to Zenzo, Gin survived the ambush and went to rescue Tsukuyo. After seeing Tsukuyo's situation, Gin was angered, and when he knew that it was her former teacher, Gin proceeds to fight Jiraiya to show that he does not deserve to be a teacher due to how he made her suffer. By evading all of Jiraiya's attacks with counterattacking, Gin escapes from his spider web and starts beating him up until overwhelming him. Jiraiya still attempts to kill Gin, but Tsukuyo throws a kunai at his neck. Character Poll Arc Gin became number one in the poll. In other words, he became everyone's target. Rokaku Arc Okita is attacked by a girl who claims that her father was murdered by him during the Rokaku massacre years ago. The incident is brought back to the surface to uncover the truth. Kabukicho Stray Cat Arc The Yorozuya goes on a hunt to lure and capture the Kabukicho boss cat Huichi. After Gin urinated on the grave of the stray cat and then passed out, he woke up and found he'd been turned into a white cat. At first he didn't notice, but after he asked for water from the talking stray cats, he then sees his reflection of himself on the puddle that he had transformed into a cat, and then panics and asks why he had turned into one. The Diviner Arc Katsuno Ana, the girl who gives the weather on television and a person who Gin admires, has begun to have bad weather forecasts, and people are starting to complain about the situation. Gin and the other Yorozuya decided to help her, causing the trio to be caught up in the world of Onmyojis and demons. Gin had his contract Shikigami named Getomaru, which was given to him by Katsuno Ana to help them fight against demons. Santa Arc Gin dresses up as Santa for Kagura, but soon Umibozu shows up as one as well, which turns into a fight between the two of them for who will be the true Santa for Christmas. Time Skip Arc After the two year time skip, when Shimura Shinpachi visited the Yorozuya, he found Gin with a drastic change in appearance along with Kagura. Gin has long hair and a scar on his face that resembles Yamcha from Dragon Ball. Shinpachi, together with Hijikata Toshiro, later found out that a two year time skip has never occurred. It was actually because of an alien wart that absorbs the memories of their host that has full ambitions and changes it to its two year future self, and the only way to kill it is by hitting it with a paper fan. They dealt with the alien wart that infected their friends, but it caused them great trouble with some circumstances that kept them from killing the wart. Shinpachi, as the last man standing, defeated the warts that had infected his friends and even Hijikata, but then, Gin suddenly smashed his head with a paper fan, telling him he's infected as well. It turned out that Gin was the only one who was not infected by the wart since he doesn't have any ambition at all. At the end of the episode, Gin activated the Getsuga Tensho, a parody from Bleach. Glasses Arc Gin broke Ayame's glasses, which caused him to buy her new ones. When they went to buy glasses, Gin gave Ayame the shopkeeper's glasses, which was useless to her. Due to Ayame being threatened by other killers due to her poor performance and eyesight, Gin and the Yorozuya protect her in Zenzo's home from attacks, but stray from Zenzo's thorough plans. Kabukicho 4 Divas Arc Sometime after the 4 Divas Arc, Gin became one of the 4 Divas of Kabukicho. Jugem Arc the Yagyu family is ordered to train a mischievous pet monkey for the Shogun's relative, but there's one problem first. The monkey doesn't seem to have a name yet. Jail Arc A brothel had hired the Yorozuya to make a certain customer to pay his debts. Gin found out the man was actually a real jailer and was put in jail for falsified accusations. Love Choris Arc in order to save Shinpachi and bring him back to reality, Gin started playing the Love Chorus game, but was stuck with the most unpopular character, Shiramizu Pinko. Pinko's son died when Gin shut the game with force. After the event, he was haunted by Pinko and her son's visions even in the real world, even though other people, including the fellow Chorus gamers, couldn't see. During the Love Chorus event, when forced into a corner, Gin, with his imagination, was able to remodel Pinko into his dream girl, successfully allowing him to face Shinpachi in the final round. In the end, he was the one who fell deepest in the game world, which woke the others back to reality. Renho Arc a message saying please don't look for me was left behind in Elizabeth's room. Katsura and Gin work together, but the mystery around Elizabeth's origin only continues to thicken. Vacation Arc 
the Shogun is on vacation with the Shinsengumi. While iceboarding, the Shogun accidentally falls in the hands of Gin, while completely head to toe naked and becomes a man skateboard. Scandal Arc Gin drank himself into a stupor during a celebration. Consequently, he didn't remember the events that occurred that night and the next morning woke up in bed with Otose, realizing he must have had sex with her. As he struggled to piece together what happened the night before, he learned that he apparently did not just have sex with Otose, but also with Shimura Tae, Sarutobe Ayame, Yagyu Kyube, Sukyo, and Hasegawa Taizo. With the help of Hattori Zenzo, Gin struggled to lose their affections by appearing committed to each one. His plan backfires until the women figure out that Gin lied to them all and beat him up. As Gin felt guilty for betraying all of them, he vowed to never drink alcohol again. Right after that, Zenzo revealed that the entire thing was just one big prank and that every woman he supposedly slept with was in on it. When Gin then learned that Hasegawa was not in on the prank and that it's possible that he truly slept with Hasegawa, he instantly started drinking again. Host Club Arc at the Takamagahara, Kyoshiro decided to quit his job as a host to open a plastic model shop, and the Yorozuya would be his last customer. As the Yorozuya disapproved of his decision, Hachiro told them about Madame Yagami, a rich woman who has the power to never visit a town twice. However, after visiting Takamagahara, she left, saying that she would return next week. However, as she's not known for interfering nor being intimate with any shops, her return would bring disasters for the Kabuki district. As a result of the madam's announcement, all of the hosts except for Kyoshiro had quit and there were no hosts for the madam's return. The Yorozuya decided to become the host, with Hasegawa, Ote, and Kondo joining in later. While practicing with a girl passing by, Gin along with the others were arrested by Hijikata and Sogo. After Kyoshiro explained their situation, the two men agreed to help. That night, the Takamagahara reopened, with the hosts being Gin, Shinpachi, Kagura, Ote, Hijikata, and Sogo, and Kondo was a host car. Though they only created chaos inside the club, and Sogo was the only one to get guests, Ote said that she had sent invitations to other places. As Kyoshiro were about to leave the club for the host, Saigo's Okama Club showed up, followed by Sukio, the Hyaka, Kyubei, Tojo, and Ayame. Everyone soon gathered into a large chaotic party, which was dismissed by Saigo, Sukio, and Kyubei later. Right in the middle of the chaos, Madame Yagami came. They came to mess with her before Kagura ended up throwing up on her face. When everyone had seemingly settled down and gathered at a table with the madam, Saigo paid for the drinks. The hosts tried to have a proper conversation with the madam, yet ended up being beaten by Ote, Sukio, and Kagura. Sugo built a tequila tower, attempting to have them so drunk that they couldn't move, though Gin and Hijikata were thrown towards the tower, thus destroying it. While so, Madam Yagami had already drunk 10 glasses of tequila and was still in a normal state. She then decided to leave, stating that her face was too red to see Kyoshiro. It was finally revealed that the true purpose of her return visit was to see him. In fact, Madame Yagami held no power to control the town, and she was no more than a normal lady who left everything behind after being possessed by money. She started wandering around towns at night without having a familiar shop, and as the rumors spread over Ido, she was treated with caution and had nowhere to belong. It was then that the Madame met Kyoshiro, who lavished his smiles on everyone, and his smile had become a special thing to her. In the end, she apologized for what she had done and left. As she was about to leave, Kyoshiro returned to the club with all of his hosts. With everyone gathered around her, the madam went into Takamagahara with Kyoshiro. Baragaki Arc After a misunderstanding between police forces, the Shinsengumi and the new Mimowarigumi, almost arrested Gin is offered a job by Mimowarigumi chief Sasaki Isaburo. He was to infiltrate the Check It Out gang, which held connections to the Juishishi. But when the gang kidnaps and holds hostage a younger half-brother to Sasaki and assistant to Hijikata Toshiro, Gin only sticks around until Sasaki makes it clear his job is over. After witnessing both black and white police uniforms fighting each other, Gin declares the Check It Out gang is with neither side but his own, Shiroyasha. More fighting ensues until the gang has been apprehended and everyone's mostly okay. Gin is arrested later by Hijikata for announcing his famous Joishishi title and possibly attempted murder, but Sasaki Tetsunosuke vouched for his freedom and no charges were pursued. Kintama Arc after returning home from a vacation, a hiatus in the animation, Gin discovers that someone named Sakura Kintoki has usurped his place as the protagonist of the show. People no longer knew him and he was feeling hopeless until Tama and Sadaharu came in and told him what happened. A machine developed by Gengai intended to be the ideal leader had altered the memories of others with hypnosis. They formed the Yorozuya Sepia in order to recover everyone's memories of him. Tama would go under the alias of Maragura, Kagura's temporary replacement, and Sadaharu would be Sachiharu, Shinpachi's replacement. 
In one of their attempts to trigger others' memories, Gin manages to save Sarutobi Ayame from falling down a building, who in reality wanted to receive more attention from Kintoki, and is helped by Kagura and Shimpachi, who sense that something is amiss and that they've lost something special but also worthless. Although Sarutobi, Sukio, and Kyubei state their memories are uncertain, and whether they should believe in gold or silver, the false and real protagonists contrasting colors, they believe in their friend's tears and decide to protect Gin against Kin as flashbacks appear. They then challenge Kin that if he truly is their Nakama, he should believe that Gin is not the type of man Kin believes him to be and is trustworthy. Kin easily disregards them and declares the entirety of Kabukicho district as their enemy, as Katsura and Hasegawa act on the contrary and turn their swords against him, stating that a true Nakama is the first to kill a friend if he changes and to tread along harsh paths with. However, if the path is ill taken, even if they are forced to turn everyone against them and remain alone, they must stop their friend. Gin threatens Gin that even if he is killed, his death will only set everyone's memories to zero, but Gin takes the risk. Ote, Shinpachi, and Kagura surround him as he seems to commit seppuku, and Kin is taken on a virtual animation called Mantama, in which he is the protagonist. Memories of Gin persist in others because there is something in humanity that exceeds memory, and their bodies will always recognize the memory of silver, their swords, thus the souls of samurai, and Gin's color. And Kagura and Shinpachi implore Tama not to eliminate Kin Toki as they have encouraged his production to Gengai. Courtesan of a Nation Arc Sukuyo and Hinoa tell him about Suzuran and her beauty that affected Yoshiwara. Hearing this, he was invited by Suzuran herself, thinking that he would have a chance to sleep with her, but her appearance is not what she thinks it is. Learning that she had made a promise with one of her clients, he, Sukuyo, Shinpachi, and Kagura help her find her clients. Because her former client is the Shogun, Gin says it's impossible to enter the castle to meet him. But Kagura says it's not impossible to enter the castle. He, Shinpachi, and Sukuyo are shocked to see how Kagura is close to Soyo. Entering the castle, he meets Isaburo and Nobume for their duty to protect the Shogunate castle. To get the former Shogun's attention without noticing, Tsukuyo suggests that they play kick the can. Gin resisted but had no choice but to kick the can at the former Shogun's room and ends up injuring the current Shogun. Hearing that Tokugawa Sadasada is entering the room to speak with Shige Shige, both Gin and Nobume panicked and started to run away but are stopped by Tsukuyo. With no choice, Tsukuyo and Nobume pretend to be prostitutes while Gin tries to act like Shige Shige. When Tsukuyo tells Sada Sada about Suzuran, the Naraku guard comes and arrests and has them framed for killing the Haibafuku. While in jail, Soyo comes and tells him a bedtime story based on the actual promise between Suzuran and Maizo. Learning that Maizo is the man who made a promise to Suzuran, the Shinsengumi lets them out and saves Maizo. Reaching to Sada Sada's place, Maizo's body is thrown and an enraged Gin tries to kill Sada Sada but he's blocked by a masked enemy. Battling against the enemy, Gin gets himself hit with poison needles and is unable to move. When he realized the enemy is Oboro, he seems to be shocked to meet him again. Hearing about Yoshida Shoyu's crime, Gin is boiled with rage and tries to kill Oboro. Overpowered and poisoned by him, Gin lays defeated until both Shinsengumi and Mimowarigumi arrived. Sasaki Isaburo and Mimowarigumi members attack the remaining Naraku members as Gin remains wounded and unable to fight. After some banter between the two, Sasaki shoots Gin in the chest, claiming that he is useless trash now. Sukuyo is sent into a rage after seeing Gin get shot. She runs over to him but neglects a Naraku member sneaking up behind and attacking. Suddenly, Gin's wooden sword is plunged through the Naraku member's stomach, killing him. It turns out that Sasaki shot him with an antidote to the poison that helps Gin recover. Gin leaves after Oboro and Tokugawa Sada Sada slash two more Naraku members along the way. Before he leaves, Sasaki asks Gin what he wants. Gin replies that he wants Sada Sada's head. Sasaki said that it could be expensive, but Gin replies that his head is worth nothing. Sasaki covers Gin's escape and orders all of his Mimawari Gumi members to cover that ordinary man, and to allow absolutely no one upstairs. Gin, Sukuyo, and Nobume all leave together after Oboro and Tokugawa Sada Sada. Beam Sword Style Arc Gin personally tries to bring Shinpachi's childhood friend Obi back from his senses. Frozen Time Arc Otose enters the Yorozuya shouting for them to pay their rent when suddenly she freezes in place. Gin found that everything froze except him, Kagura and Shimpachi. Gin remembers that last night an alien gave him a weird clock. He was drunk when it was given to him and he did not listen to what the alien said, telling him to protect it. In the morning, he slapped his alarm clock with the clock the alien gave him, causing it to stop. The Yorozuya finds a way to make the clock move and Gin found out that it works by moving the hands of the clock manually and make Gengai fix the clock, but by doing this, it caused Gengai and Hasegawa to die in different situations. 
Later on, the trio found out that the clock was only running low on battery and saw that the battery needed was unique, and they searched for the battery. Things don't seem to go their way, causing ruckus until the clock runs out of battery and cause them also to freeze in time. The SFX replaced the battery of the clock, turning everything back to normal. With the time returning to normal, Gin slapped his alarm clock and attempts to smash it, and the universal clock was nowhere to be found. Patriot Reunion Party Arc Gin is invited to a reunion party in which he encountered Katsuro and Sakamoto who are already having a good time as soon as he reached the room. He turned his back against them, realizing it was the idiots who started the party. But he soon learned that the two were also invited by someone else, as Katsuro showed the invitation with the name Kurokono Tasuke as the sender. Katsuro and Sakamoto only recall a basketball game, a parody of Kuroko no Basket, together with a Pokari. Gin has no idea what they were saying until a letter delivered by Takachi and Peta with words, Rest in peace, my comrade. They realize their memory of Kurokono is somehow related to Pokari. Deko Boko Arc Everyone swapped genders, where both sexes appear to have a strong masculinity slash femininity. Gin appeared to be slightly shorter with big eyes and fully equipped with a large chest, where they were shortly named Ginko. In the female form, Ginko is flirtatious and seems to enjoy his time as a woman, even dressing up as a high school girl. She later encountered the female Hijikata and teases him how he won't get a man due to his fatness, and they were later seen competing with each other by attracting males. She also encountered the male Sachan, who seemed to not be attracted to the female Gin, but was still eager with the SNM play. When the virus cannon was fired, people came back to their normal appearances apart from Gin, Kagura, Sachan, Sukio, Kyubei, Kondo, Sugo, Hijikata, Sadaharu, and Shimpachi glasses. After some time, everyone seemed to be embracing their new bodies while Gin was nowhere to be found, only to find out later that he made Kyubei realize that he prefers his original female form, and later saves everyone with Kyubei by going to the planet that the inhabitants' respective sex will also be switched. With everyone back to their normal genders, Gin found he was sleeping at the cinema with everyone while Sachan clings onto him. Grim Reaper Arc while a phantom killer had been targeting drunkards on the street, a drunk Gin went home, only to see a Shinigami asking him to help it in committing seppuku. Unfortunately, he ended up beating up the Shinigami unconscious and brought it home. At the Yorozuya, the Shinigami turned out to be a girl named Ikeda Asaimon. In an alley, the Shinsengumi found the fourth victim, with his neck completely cut except for a small piece of skin. The 18th Ikeda Yaimon identified the cut as Kimoarai, a technique of the Ikeda clan, and accused Asaimon of being the culprit. That night, she hid under a bridge from the police searching for her, having a dream of executing the 16th Ikeda Yaimon in the past. The Yorozuya rescued her and handed her to the 18th Ikeda Yaimon. There, he revealed that she was completely innocent. The 18th Yaimon also told the Yorozuya about their past. Unlike Yaimon, Asaimon was an adopted orphan, and yet the two support each other like siblings. Not long ago, the 16th Ikeda Yaimon was discovered to have freed an amount of prisoners 10 years before and had to commit seppuku as a punishment, with Asaimon executing him. When his death was publicly known, she left the clan as a traitor to hide the truth. After listening to his story, Gin deduced that Yaimon was indeed the true killer, whilst the Sujigiri victims were the freed prisoners. However, using the fact that Gin was also one of them, Yaimon forced him to help the Ikeda clan. He planned to fake Asaimon's death and hid her in a corpse container to get past the Shinsengumi, with the Yorozuya escorting her. On the way, Asaimon expressed to Gintoki your feeling of incompetence as an executioner, uncapable of using the Kimoarai on the 16th Ikeda Yaimon, who she considered as a father. Gin then assured her that both he and Asaimon were good people. While so, Hijikata Toshiro and Okita Sogo still demanded to check the containers, and informed the Yorozuya that Yaimon had, in fact, sold Asaimon and Gin to the Hidosubashi faction, and that the victims were all Hidosubashi opposers. Having gained confidence, Asaimon opened the way to the 18th Ikeda Yaimon, as she chose to die with him to clear the clan's name. However, Yaimon revealed that Gin had indirectly killed her biological father, who tried to sell her to the Hidosubashi faction. Gin had let himself get captured in her stead, yet the 16th Yaimon executed her father and released Gin. At the present, the 18th Yaimon demanded her to kill Gin as she recalled her promise to behead him during his imprisonment. As soon as Asaimon chose to seemingly kill Gin, her brother attempted to kill her. What actually happened was that Gin drew out her sword and soon attacked Yaimon. His past was then revealed. As a child, he killed several prisoners to prove himself worthy of the title of the 17th Ikeda Yaimon, resulting in the title being given to Asaimon. Afterwards, he conspired with Hidosubashi Nobunobu to gain the title by getting rid of both Asaimon and his father. At present, the 18th Yaimon lost to Gin and got injured. As the assault of the Hidosubashi faction continued, he sacrificed himself and entrusted Asaimon to clean the clan's pride. As a result, he was beheaded by Nobunobu, who claimed that he himself would be the country's executioner. 
Later, upon hearing of her brother's death, Asaimon claimed to take full responsibility and committed seppuku, which was actually a way to kill her Ikeda Asaimon identity as she became the 19th Ikeda Yaimon. She then acted as the executioner of the Yorozuya, cutting their handcuffs, her skull mask, as well as Gin's left nipple. Confessional Arc After seeing how the customers in Otose's snack bar ask advice from Tama and confess all their problems, Gin comes up with an idea to profit from the ordeals. He uses Tama to open up a robo-girl confession room in an alley. However, he gets caught up in a horrible mess when an unexpected customer, the Shogun, arrives. Soul Switch Arc Gin gets caught in an accident with Hijikata, causing them to accidentally switch souls. Kayantai Arc During a business meeting of the Kayantai, Sakamoto introduced a bag containing 50 million yen as his latest product. In fact, it was an ordinary bag having nothing but rocks inside. Later, he used these bags to throw a party at Snack Smile to impress Oryu. Under Gin's instruction, Mutsu arrived and angrily threw him into the ocean in a bag. In a pub, Mutsu and Gin discussed about their first meeting with Sakamoto. It was revealed that after leaving the Joy War, he was tricked and thrown into the ocean, only to be picked up by a fleet of the space pirate gang Chidori, whose vice leader was Mutsu. At present, she was informed that Sakamoto had been captured by the group again. The space pirates inquired the whole Kayantai fleet as a ransom to save Sakamoto. However, Mutsu chose to attack them and infiltrated the enemy's ship with Gin. As the battle against the pirate occurred, her past with Sakamoto was shown. Ten years ago, having been picked up by the Chidori as a slave, Sakamoto offered to buy the whole fleet with the slaves, which Mutsu flatly turned down. In jail, he taught her about the nature of doing business as opposed to slave dealing. Sometime later, after her father's death, Mutsu overheard the supervisor's plan to kill her and the slaves. Moved by Sakamoto's nature, she instructed him to escape with the slaves while surrendering herself to the rebels. Nevertheless, Sakamoto refused to escape and was captured along with Mutsu. Beforehand, she had used the escape pods as a distraction and let the slaves take over the Chidori ships. As soon as the slaves fired cannons at the mothership, the two defeated the pirates and threw all of them into the ocean, thus beginning the operation of the Gaiantai. In the meantime, Mutsu pretended to be dead as soon as she reached Sakamoto's place, where he was held hostage. Seeing her defeat, Sakamoto mocked the pirate supervisor and angrily knocked him down upon hearing the latter's reply. Mutsu then defeated the last remnants of the Chidori, which revealed that she is Ayato, and killed the supervisor while severely injuring Sakamoto and Gin in the process. Sometime after the event, Mutsu sent a bag of radishes as a thankful gift to Gin, as the Kayantai cast off. Afro Arc The Yorozuya try to help the silent, shy Saito Shimaru become friends with Katsura, who is acting as an undercover agent in the Shinsengumi, and joins Saito's third division. However, oblivious to Saito's attempts, Katsura gets Saito embroiled in an execution trial, and the Yorozuya must speak for Saito and defend him for his life. Feigned Illness Arc Due to viewers' questions about Kagura's glowing health and aptitude under the sun despite being a Yato, the author decides to reinforce early character setup, and Kagura collapses in the summer heat one day. Once at the hospital, Kagura takes advantage of her friend's deep concerns and misunderstandings to pretend to be a lot sicker than she actually is. However, things get out of hand, and a lavish funeral for her is prepared by Princess Soyo. Luckily, sadist King Sogo takes extreme measures to unveil the truth. Shogun Assassination Arc The Yorozuya gets hired by the Shogun and the Shinsengumi to protect him from an assassination attempt. Gin also had his clash fight with Takasugi in this arc. As such, his past is finally brought to light. When he was taken in by Yoshida, as shown previously, he meets Takasugi and Katsura, students in an official temple school, with the former being a scholarship student and the latter a noble. Takasugi is shown to be very mischievous, often getting into trouble. While he and Katsura are confronted by some fellow classmates bullying Takasugi for his outrageous behavior, Gin arrives and knocks one of them down after cracking an inappropriate joke to Takasugi and Katsura, resulting in Yoshida coming and beating him up along with the bullies. Takasugi later goes to challenge Gin and is defeated. After being encouraged by Yoshida to keep trying, Takasugi keeps on challenging him and getting beaten up. It's then discovered by Takasugi's father, and he threatens to disown him. Eventually, Takasugi becomes the first person to ever defeat Gin, stated by himself. Slowly, Katsura, who seems very different from his current goofy character, Gin, and Takasugi become good friends. Gin, along with his two fellow samurai, later stand up against officials who had come to disband Yoshida's school. After this, Katsura and Takasugi leave their temple school to study under Yoshida along with Gin. It's also revealed that when Yoshida was captured by the Naraku, Gin is forced to make a choice between saving his friends or his sensei. Gin decides to kill his sensei, required to do so by himself to save his comrades, since it is what Yoshida would have wanted. This also explains the reason for Takasugi's grudge against Gin. After a fierce fight, Gin consults Takasugi that even if he has to kill him, he would save his soul of his old friend Takasugi of the Yoshida school from his childhood. 
This led to an outcome where they both fought shortly together against their true enemies of the Naraku faction. Farewell Shinsengumi Arc With Hitosubashi Nobu Nobu in power, the Shinsengumi is falsely rendered as the scapegoat for Shige Shige's murder, and they are suspended by the Mimowarigumi. In the aftermath of the Shogun's assassination, Gin drags his injured body to the dojo Kondo is practicing at, and the two finally share a drink as Nakamas as Kondo is taken away. Matsudaira and Kondo are taken as prisoners to Kokujo Island and are awaiting execution, and the Shinsengumi is seemingly dissolved. With Kondo's plea not to cause trouble and to protect Ido, Hijikata tries to steer clear of trouble and stifers his anger when he encounters Nobunobu in Snack Smile. However, Gin punches Nobunobu and knocks out his memories when Ote is under threat for speaking out against the new Shogun. Along with the newly assembled Shinsengumi and the Joishishi, the Yorozuya crew travel to the island and fight against the Mimiwarigumi and Tendoshu in unison. With escape imminent, Utsuro appears and battles Sogo, Nobume, and Kagura, later aided by Gin. Although baffled by Utsuro's resemblance to Shoyo, Gin automatically responds and is able to fend off Utsuro's attacks despite being obviously outmatched in strength because he remembers Shoyo's sword. Rakuyo Decisive Battle Arc Weeks after the Shinsengumi leave Ido, the Yorozuya and Katsuro's Juishishi have been in hiding. A request from Ibai Nobume leads the two groups to team up with the remnant Kiheitai plus Sakamoto and his Kayentai to save Kamui and Takasugi from the deadly clutches of Utsuro and his Harusame. Things become more complicated when Utsuro finally sets his sight on Umibozu, who is also after Kamui. After all these groups will come together and fight to survive on Rakuyo. Excalibur Arc Gin gets a worn out Excalibur stuck in his butt and tries to get rid of him by winning back the sword's wife from Sugo who possesses the sheath for the sword. However, the sheath is in love with Sugo and is occupied by another potent Excalibur, Kagura's boyfriend arc. Gin and Umibozu discover that Kagura has a boyfriend, causing them both to panic and worry about her so-called boyfriend. When Kagura brings him home, Gin and Umibozu are unable to contain their nervousness. However, an unexpected turn of events brings impending marriage for the new couple as the earth is under threat once again. Katsura and Gin go off in search of a homeless man who used to annually visit Ikumatsu and her husband's ramen shop because of her promise with her deceased husband to perform the shop's end of the year ritual of splitting the man's single bowl of ramen into three and sharing them. Gin, with his lifeless eyes and lackadaisical demeanor, blends impeccably with the homeless while Katsura's enthusiasm stands out from the crowd. At the park, they meet a mysterious man who suffers from severe memory loss and is hailed as a god among the homeless. HDZ48 Arc Gin becomes a producer to profit from Kagura and Otsu's collaboration as an idol unit. However, an alien idol group, Galaxy Kingdom Bitches 48, arrives to threaten Otsu chan's fandom and status as top idol by providing questionable services to fans behind closed curtains. Silver Soul Arc after the events occurring in Rakuyo, Katsura and his Juishishi, Sakamoto and his Kayantai, Tokugawa Nobunobu and Gin with his Yorozuya were heading back to Earth and planning how to negotiate with the Altana Liberation Army and how to stop Utsudo to stop the insane war the universe was starting against the Earth. Gin and the Yorozuya went to Earth and the others stayed in space to negotiate with the Liberation Army and to get rid of the fleet of spaceships threatening Earth. When Gin and the Yorozuya arrived at Kabuchiko, the Yorozuya Ginchan establishment was already destroyed by the Amanto and they were taking Otai and Tama with them. Gin, speaking in the name of the whole Yorozuya, accepted the job requests from his friends to come back and fight. While beating the Amanto, Gin said that everyone had terminals between their legs and they could not break those terminals as they did with Ido's terminal. After saying this, he had two Amanto guys flying from Tama and Otai's hands towards his groin, breaking his own terminal in the act. They retired that place and kept fighting in the rest of Kabukicho, as everyone in there started fighting and chasing the Amanto from it. After a while, Gin is seen in a library reading a jump magazine about the live action movie cast, instead of searching for the Tendoshu's whereabouts in order to stop the war. Because of this, the rest of the Yorozuya beat him. After they made a ruckus in the library about the live action movie cast, the Naraku arrived and assassins dressed in common citizen's garment surrounded them. They fled from there and bumped into Imai Nobume, who helped them out. When they got into a harbor full of containers, they only found the awful carnage of Naraku agents and Amanto made mainly by Utsuro. When Gin saw this, he could not resist his own anger and ended up running towards Utsuro, only to be restrained by a Naraku assassin that was apparently dead. 
At this point, the Yorozuya with Nobume realized that the Naraku agents had some of Utsuro's blood and thus they were undead, but they weren't immortal because of the small amount. As Utsuro said that death was unavoidable for everyone, he told Gin to either choose to die with everyone else without doing anything or fight until the very end, and Gin answered that he chooses to wield his sword to cut him down. The battle between undead Naraku and Yorozuya starts, and while Shinpachi, Kagura, Sadaharu, and Nobume were slicing the Naraku agents, Gin was fighting against the last of the three Naraku crows. He was easily defeated in normal circumstances, but as Gin tried to get close to Utsuro, he found out that Hitsugi, as well, had Utsuro's blood in his veins, and Gin had a hard time trying to take him out to reach Utsuro. When Gin finally had a clean opening to slice him, the Liberation Army attacked them from the skies as retaliation for what Utsuro did to them, thinking they were common humans, sending Gin flying to a container. Nobume reached him and took him out of there, but the Liberation Army kept attacking, and Nobume threw Gin to the water to minimize the damage he could get. When the attacks to the harbor ended, Gin got out of the water and helped Nobume to get up, and put her onto Sadaharu's back to get her medical attention as soon as possible. On their way to Kabukicho, they were surrounded by robots from the Liberation Army, but it turned out that a big bunch of these robots were taken by the Shinsengumi, who did a hero-like return. As they continued their way to Kabukicho, the Oniwabanshu arrived with their leader, Hattori Zenzo, and his second-in-command, Sarutobi Ayame, who went flying towards Gin, who beat her with his sword because he thought it was an enemy. He said that Sarutobi's face was way scarier than actual enemies' faces. Right after that, she embarrassed him, confusing an Amanto Bazooka with Gin's terminal. As they were fighting, the Neo Armstrong Cyclone Jet Armstrong Gengai Cannon rose from the ground. The Yorozuya hurried to the place just to see Tama, and they couldn't make it in time. When they made it to Kabukicho, the doors were closed and Ote was throwing big boulders with her bare hands from a building rooftop. She casually threw one that hit Gin in his face, causing his eyeball to fall out. As he recovered his eyeball, he got hit in the groin with another boulder, making one of his balls fall out too. As Saigo was crushing enemies' terminals, Gin fell to the ground with them because he felt that they felt as Saigo ended with their terminals. The only moment that they could enter Kabukicho was when the leader of the Dakini tribe, Ugai, breaks the entrance with just one swing. Gin appeared inside Kabukicho to help Saigo to endure one of the Dakini soldiers, who has a super thick skin and brute strength. The Yorozuya fought against the Dakini along with the Yagyu clan, who arrived on time to endure the attack. Gin and his allies had a big fight with Ugai, who seemed to be invincible. When the Hiyaka finally made it to Kabukicho, they joined with the Yagyu clan and the Yorozuya to defeat the Dakini tribe. With Sukiyo's kunai in one of Ugai's horns and a swing from Gin's sword, the horn broke, which was a symbol of dishonor among the Dakini. With this, Ugai was defeated. Right away, the Shinra tribe made its appearance and held captive some women, including Ote. Gin and Kagura helped Shinpachi get his sister and save her because the Shinra leader, Sotatsu, had dropped her from a top building. When an elastic web saves both Shinpachi and Ote from falling to death, Doromizu Jirocho, along with his daughter and his Yakuza men, executed a trap and took out some of the Shinra soldiers. Then, the Yorozuya and Jirocho fought against the Shinra tribe inside of the wrecked building. Gin and Jirocho had an advantage over the Shinra since both of them already knew how the Shinra tribe fight, because they had defeated the Shinra soldiers that Kujaku Himekata brought with her to take over Kabukicho. With some tricks and the help of Jirocho's Yakuza men in Shinra garments, Gin and Jirocho took Sutatsu out. With the sun setting, Gin and everyone else went to the streets to fight the remaining Amanto in Kabukicho. Ugai got up and tried to get his men to keep on fighting, but this was until Hidoro got rid of Ugai. All of the Kabukicho citizens started chasing away the Amanto, and with the help of the Onmyoji clans, Katsuno and Shiniro clans, even the Kabukicho citizens were being chased away by illusions the Onmyoji made. Gin was especially scared of the ghosts the Onmyoji portrayed. Everything ended with the successful expulsion of the Amanto from Kabukicho. After this, Gin allowed his Yorozuya to rest from the battle, and said to them that they were now grown-ups, and told them that they were stronger. Enough reason for Gin to be proud of them, but they couldn't hear him because they fell asleep. Otai heard him and said that they, Shinpachi and Kagura, just missed something they don't hear so often. Finally, Gin allowed himself to rest, but when he was falling asleep, Getamaru went and put a pandemonium on Gin's mouth. She said before that pandemoniums were good enough to heal any wound or illness, which made Gin to feel deeply disgusted, so he started to drink a lot of alcohol, most likely to clean his mouth from the pandemonium and put on earphones to sleep. When he was falling asleep again, Sukuyo, who was just walking close, stepped on an almost empty bottle that Gin had left there, and as she was falling, a little amount of alcohol from the bottle ended on her lips, enough to make her get all drunk and start a wild party where Gin was drinking a whole bottle or two. Sukuyo was forcing him to do so. This party was going on when Hijigata informed everyone that Gengai, the one who saved Ido from being destroyed by a machine, was missing. 
Gin went with his Yorozuya and the Shinsengumi to look for the old man, Kagura followed her Yato instinct and got separated from the group, and thus Gin and the rest tried to go with her, but the remaining Amanto started a battle, which made the group lose time. Suddenly, they all saw a spaceship that was heading towards them, which turned out to be a Harusame spaceship that contained Kamui and his 7th division. With the help of them, they were able to reach Kagura and Kamui, who made it to his sister before almost everyone. Gin and Sogo suggested that one day, if not that moment, they could continue with the fight they had, but at that moment, Utsuro appeared, but Gin couldn't do much about it. It's there that earthquakes shake all of Ido, and the Altana started to flow through the cracks. After a bit, Gin encounters Umibozu, who told Gin a way to kill Utsuro using Altana from different planets, and gives a lot of the Shinsengumi and Yato agents weapons that work with alien Altana and gave Gin a special weapon, a short sword with alien Altana crystals on its blade. Gin again referenced the Japanese traditions and said that a respected samurai would often carry two swords, a katana and a wakizashi, short katana, and then told Umibozu that he already had two swords, referring this time to Shinpachi and Kagura. The battle reset, and the ones who had the Altana weapons were now killing off the undead Naraku. Even Hitsuki felt that his healing faculty was diminished after Gin cut off one of his arms with a special sword. When Gin encountered Utsuro, he took off both of Utsuro's eyes with a special sword, and thus Utsuro was temporarily blind. But even like that, Utsuro managed to almost kill Gin and broke his special sword. Then Utsuro ruthlessly killed a lot of Yato and Shinsengumi officers, saying that the humans have done lots of unimaginable things to experiment with him, including taking off his sight, and thus he learned how to not depend on his sight. He managed to nearly kill Yamazaki with one swing of his sword into his throat. At this point, Sadaharu had already broken from Ido's castle and searched for Ane and Mone to control the newly risen dragon holes, but they were attacked by the Naraku and Ane and Mone gave to Sadaharu their power to continue and keep dealing with the dragon holes. Gin and the Yorozuya had a hard time protecting Sadaharu from the Naraku and Utsuro who tried to kill him because his presence was calming down the dragon holes and thus Utsuro's healing faculty was being diminished. But they could do nothing as Sadaharu fell to one of the dragon holes and started disintegrating because of Altana. As they fought Utsuro with all they had, Sadaharu just vanished into the Altana, and thus the dragon holes regained their strength and Utsuro had recovered his healing faculty. Gin and the Yorozuya couldn't help but get furious at this as they increased their attacks, but due to Utsuro's speed, Gin had Utsuro's sword crossing his stomach. When everyone encountered Sadaharu without a body floating and dominating the flows of Altana, Gin and the Yorozuya got up and told Utsuro that they would not end there. Because of this, Utsuro was now frightened because of the humans and tried to vanish Sadaharu, but Nobume didn't let him do so. Then Gin charged against him, and in the very last moment, Utsuro threw himself into a dragon hole, making one little amount of Altana go back to the ocean of Altana, as Gin remarked later. Gin tried to stop him from doing that, but he could do nothing because they had no time, and the erect Amenotori ship was falling from space to Ido. Gin and his allies survived the war. In the few days after the end of the war, he and his Yorozuya met in the remainings of the Yorozuya Ginchan establishment, and there Kagura said that she had things to do, like save Sadaharu from his comatose state, and so she had to leave Earth for a while. With this said, Gin stated that he also had things to do, and so he left Ido for two years. During those two years, Gin traveled through all of Japan looking for every single dragon hole in order to find either Utsuro or Yoshido Shoyu and finish him, because he reasoned that the way Utsuro vanished from Earth was the same as a drop of water going back to the ocean. During his adventures, Gin visited a dragon hole in the shores, and found out that the people of the temple that guarded the dragon hole had witnessed the rebirth of a creature and they weren't sure if it was even human. From the dragon hole, it came out a shapeless mass of living meat that eventually took the shape of a baby who Gin recognized as Utsuro slash Shoyo. That night, Gin tried to kill the baby, but he couldn't put an end to him. Gin instead took the child with him on his journey, and that child grew up in the blink of an eye. Gin himself wasn't sure if the kid was going to turn into Utsuro or Shoyo because the kid can't talk nor express any sort of will. One day, the kid was about to fall from a cliff, and Gin saved him and said that he was not going to talk, at least to ask for a hand. And then he called him Shoyo and asked him if that was how he felt when Gin was following him when he was a child. For the first time, the kid spoke and told him that he himself was a charming and well-behaved child, but Gin was a mischievous and difficult child and recognized that Gin had people constantly relying on him, and thus he underwent more hardship than most. He then asked Gin if he would lend him a hand. Gin seemed deeply shocked by having Shoyo talking to him again. At that time, the Naraku was following them and attacked. Shoyo pushed Gin from the cliff to save him, and Shoyo took a lot of damage instead of Gin, who was now hanging from the cliff. With a broken spear that he took from his own body, Shoyo struck himself in the heart and took it out, a heart made of Altana crystals, and entrusted it to Gin. Without his heart, Shoyo could not be able to maintain his body. 
Since then, Gin went from town to town, escaping from the Niraku who wanted to steal Shoyo's heart. At one point, Gin ended up in a town where the Shoko Sanjuku school was once placed. Here he encountered Takasugi, and after a short fight realized that somehow Takasugi had Utsuro's blood in his body and thus he could kill himself. Takasugi escaped, then Gin looked for Takasugi in the town, and he bumped into Kijimi Matako and Takaji Henpeda, members of Takasugi's Kihetai, who were also looking for Takasugi. When they were on a bridge over the town's river, the Naraku attacked Gin and he escaped them, and then a boat with dynamite exploded, sending a part of the Naraku flying away. Gin ended up in the water, and he explained that he couldn't swim because he ate a fruit and now he's cursed with sinking the same way a heavy hammer does. It's a parody of Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece. And at this moment is where Takasugi appears on a boat. Takasugi and Gin had a discussion about the trivial stuff and the Naraku attacked them again. And so Takasugi ended in the water with Gin and both of them fought the Naraku as they had back in the Joy War. After this, Gin caught up to Takasugi on a rooftop and threatened him. But then the Naraku appeared and Takasugi stole Shoyo's heart and apparently gave it to the Naraku. When Takasugi tried to escape, Katsuda appeared and took Shoyo's heart from Takasugi's hands. Katsuda was all cool when his hand slipped and let Shoyu's heart fall down, which made both Katsuda and Gin run to reach the heart. As they were going down, Gin realized that Katsuda and Takasugi were accomplices, and Katsuda faked the terrorist attack to the terminal in order to place a decoy. Takasugi, Katsuda, and Gin identified themselves as Yoshida Shoyo disciples and fought against the Naraku. At the end of this battle, Gin has Shoyo's heart on his hands again and states that he would choose the path neither Takasugi nor Katsuda took. If Katsuro wants to kill Utsuro, then Gin would save him. If Takasugi wants to save Utsuro, then Gin would slice him. Then Gin said that none of the paths both Takasugi and Katsuro choose were wrong, and so he would now be able to set on any path. He stated that he could go pure white in order to save both his master and the world. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.